Welcome guys, this is uh, going to be a video on my uh, in-home server build and uh, the feature that I'm I guess going to be looking at the most is this uh, this is a Norco uh, what is it 4220 rack mount 4U case uh, with 20 hot swap drives in the front and uh, you know I did a little research on this uh, company and as far as I could tell this is the only one out there that is anywhere near this uh, ballpark on price the case was like 329 uh, or 299 and 30 bucks to ship or something from Newegg so pretty good deal I mean for a rack mount chassis with that many hot swap drives uh, pretty good deal so uh, I'll kind of go over the components of everything here and I'm not uh, ready to fire it up or anything yet uh, we'll get to that later but I've gotten some of the components in you know I was itching to play around this is an old drive that I had it's actually yes I believe it's a SATA uh, SATA 2 it's just a little 80 gig Western Digital this will be my operating system drive and I may switch that out for my SSDs um, you know it's just I, I don't think that I'll need that uh, anytime soon so I'm running just a cheapo gigabyte board uh, this computer has the new F uh, AMD FX this is the 4100 so it's a four core uh, processor I've got a my um, VM server or my ESX server is the 8 core 8120 so we'll take a look at that too later uh, so, but this is going to be my uh, SAN, and I'm going to be running CentOS. Uh, I've played with a bunch of different distributions. <clears throat> I did a lot of testing the last couple months, and I played with FreeNAS, and I really like it. It worked great when I was doing iSCSI targets uh, with VMware and everything, but I wanted to go switch to NFS, and it just totally bombed. As soon as I started doing any kind of writes, just basic file copies uh, to NFS, it just the whole server locked up and then that was it and I, I tried different versions I even tried the new 8.3 of free NAS you know I, th I think it's beta or whatever it is and I still didn't uh, have any luck I tried all kinds of configuration options with ZFS2 with using uh, a cache SSD and then there was another one it was like a write oh I can't remember what it was some other drive uh, that that you can offload to a faster drive to make it perform a little better. I tried all kinds of options with that and nothing helped. So um, this is basically all a new egg special. I bought the memory and everything. All of this. It's only it's got 16 gigs, um, and I can go up to 32. But for what I'm doing, this is plenty. And uh, an OCZ 600 watt power supply. I don't know if that's going to be enough if I end up populating this whole chassis. But we'll you know we'll see as we go. One thing that is cool about uh, this chassis, and one thing I really liked about it, was <clears throat> the ports that are actually on the back plane here. And I'll, I'll have to take one of these out in a little while and show you. But it's these uh, SAS connectors, or these SFF uh, 8087s. And it's cool. And what they have is they have a breakout cable, which basically goes from that to four SATA cables. Uh, but what I did was I bought a little... Um, Again, a cheap uh, device. This is the High Point Rocket Raid oh, 2070 SGL, I believe it is, or 2770, something like that. But all it is is it's their it's their fake raid. But I'm not going to use that. I'm going to do a uh, raid in the operating system. That way, it's portable. If my OS blows up or if that card blows up, uh, worst case, I could actually plug into the SS or sorry the SATA. Uh, ports on the motherboard and use it uh, you know just remap the drives in the uh, MD config so uh, but pretty simple I mean I really liked that it used these cables uh, because if you think about it I mean that cable right there is equal to four regular of these SATA cables SATA cables whatever so it's gonna be a whole lot cleaner so you know I'll run that in one of those cards or slots PCI it's PCI Express 8 uh, times 8 
slot so you do get full bandwidth to the motherboard. That's one thing I did like about it too. It was only like a hundred and... I got it for 110 I found a open box item on eBay, but they retail for like 150 or something like that. Newegg has them on sale every now and then too, so and then my plan is eventually to buy a second one. But I gotta get a, a PCI video card first. The, the one thing I don't like about this board is it doesn't have an onboard video card or display port. <laughs> so I'll have to get a PCI to replace my old school GTX 8800 that I'm running just as a <laughs> as a basic video driver. So uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, I'll take one of these off and show how these work. These are pretty cool, but it's all hot swap um, except for the the drives up here and you don't have to do this but that's what I'm gonna do uh, for now I just don't have enough connections uh, to light up all these back plane. I only have enough to do two so that'll be four and four is eight um, my data drives what I currently have are two uh, Western Digital two terabyte greens these are the three uh, gigabit uh, per second or you know the SATA twos but for what I'm doing I don't need anything super fast so this will just be a a basic uh, NFS SAN that I can dump all my and SIFs so I'll, I'll use that for me and and the family to access videos and um, I actually have loaded up um, a PS3 media server and so it actually serves it up via UPnP to my playstations throughout the house so we can watch DVDs and Blu-rays that I'm gonna rip or that I have ripped onto here so um, so those are my two existing drives and I have six more coming so I'll have a total of eight which is 16 terabytes but I'm gonna do a RAID 6 so I'll lose two uh, which is still good so you know I'll still have 12 terabytes of well a little less than that because they're not you know full two terabytes they're a little a little bit shy of that but that'll be a lot of storage I'll be able to rip plenty of blu-rays and that should last me for a long time but anyways um, really cool chassis here uh, you know there's not a whole lot of reviews on this thing and a few that I saw once one guy was talking about how these things were a little flimsy and I mean they're definitely not enterprise but you know they don't they don't really flex a whole lot especially once you get the drive in them um, and I already have a couple of the drives but you do want to be careful when you're pushing it in. Make sure you get it all the way in there first, gently, and then click it in. So otherwise, you'll snap the little plastic catch off. But yeah, once you get the drives in them, uh, it definitely sturdies it up a whole lot more. So so that's where we're at. Uh, so I'm gonna get everything plugged in and wired in, and then uh, we'll uh, boot her up, see all the flashy lights, and start plugging away at configuration. So. Alright, we'll be back in a bit.